What's going on guys? Today we are looking at a relatively new product that the folks over at TP-Link were kind enough to send over. And this is sort of a subcategory of products that I have not really gotten to take any time with to test. This is the Archer GE800. And this is not just any old router. This is a gaming router. Now, I currently have a pretty darn high-end TP-Link mesh router system installed in my house, and I've been quite impressed with that system. What I'm super curious to see is, what do you get from a gaming router? My speeds are already quite good. Is this thing possibly going to give me even better speeds, even better latency than I'm getting on this mesh router system. You can see some of the specifications here on screen, 19 gigabits per second, tri-band Wi-Fi 7. I mean, that does sound <laughs> quite ridiculous. Two 10G ports for future-proof connectivity. So basically what they're saying is we are going well above and beyond what most people are gonna have so that this router is gonna be able to kind of just stay your router for the foreseeable future as your internet speeds get faster. It's not going to matter. It's going to be able to hang with just about anything. Acceleration for games, a game control panel, gaming style and design, TP-Link Home Shield, and then they have this, this Easy Mesh compatibility, which basically means it works with other Easy Mesh compatible routers. So you have this sort of category of routers that are Easy Mesh compatible, and they can sort of sync with each other and form a mesh system. Unfortunately, the router I currently have, which is a mesh system, is not Easy Mesh. This is a complicated thing that needs to be like sorted out it would be really cool if this router could be like my main router and then i could use the other ones in that mesh system to cover the rest of my house but that i don't believe is possible but if you do have compatible routers or you want to sort of add to this that is definitely possible all right let's lift this lid off of here man that's a good seal you can actually see the blades of that router here this is much larger than i think i was like visualizing so inside this box we have an ethernet cable we have this looks like a little, um, oh, it's a reset tool. So it looks like a SIM ejector tool, but it's for resetting. That's kind of smart. You have a very large power brick. That is a big power brick, a big power supply for a router. That should tell you how serious this thing is. And then we have the actual router itself. Man, this thing is so big. My goodness. So you can see our port selection here, on off switch. We have our four 2.5 gigabit per second LAN. We have two 10 gigabit per second connections. We have our SFP plus port, that USB 3, and then that is the barrel plug for power. So up front here, we have four different buttons, a toggle for those RGB LEDs, which I think is pretty smart. We have the game mode. If you press and hold it for about two seconds, it's gonna turn that game mode off or on. We have a Wi-Fi button that's actually gonna to toggle off and on the Wi-Fi. And then we have our WPS button that will help you quickly connect this thing to other devices. So this is the Deco BE63 mesh system that I'm going to be replacing. And just to give you a sense of scale, look at the size of this thing, guys. That is absolutely crazy. So we're going to get into that setup process here now. So we have connected the Ethernet cable coming from my fiber box. We've plugged in the power. And now we should be able to jump over into the TP-Link application. I assume we will be using the same Deco application, but the QR code here in the quick setup, the quick start guide, is directing me towards this TP-Link Tether application. So we're gonna install that and get started. Okay, so it says no device is found. We need to add a device. It is a gaming router and it is, let's see which one of these, I guess it's that one there, the GE800. The names on these things are so strange because the box does explicitly say BE19000 but I guarantee that's what it is. And it's gonna take you through the instructions here. Remove power off your modem, plug in the device, power up your modem, power up the router. The LEDs are on, we're gonna continue. So it looks like on the bottom, we're going to have a Wi-Fi information, an SSID that we can quickly join that network. Yes, indeed, right on the bottom of that router, we are now connected to that network. Let's continue. And of course, we're gonna change that SSID and password here shortly. That is indeed the device that we are setting up. So now we can create a local password to manage the device. We are using the ethernet port, so we're gonna continue from there. And generally speaking, this is stuff that you're just going to be able to just hit next on, but you can apparently auto detect and it's going to correctly select it as the dynamic IP. Do you need to change your MAC address? No, I do not. Set your wireless network name and password. So this is where you can actually just name it. So we are up and running, and there's a whole lot of different things that you can do here. And you can actually see that I did a little bit of testing off camera. Recently boosted Xbox gaming console. I did some 
Xbox Cloud Game Streaming. We're going to show you some of that, but that's really cool that it recognized that and was actually trying to make that run better. And like I said, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to need to talk about on here, like the RGB effects and your Game Center related things. But what I want to do really quickly is I want to get the most basic thing out of the way. I'm going to do a speed test with my current router, switch to this thing, and see if it's actually faster. So right now I am on my old mesh system, which is not old actually, and it's really quite good. This is a fairly high-end system, and we're going to be in the same spot. We're just going to go ahead and run this KUB fiber internet connection. Let's see what kind of result we get here on that system. Honestly, this is not a particularly great score for this phone, for this system, for this internet connection. 277 down, 229 up, and you can see my scores for responsiveness down there below. But now what we need to do is we need to actually switch over to that gaming router, the new router. And we're going to run this test again and see what kind of score we get now. And hopefully it is significantly faster. And as you can see, we are already about doubling our speed. This is still not kind of what I was expecting. Sometimes this OnePlus open phone, the Wi-Fi speeds are a little bit inconsistent. So we're going to do this test again on a laptop here very shortly. But still, it is significantly faster. Let's get our detailed results here and look at the ping, the responsiveness down here at the bottom. That is already a decent result, but I think we can do a bit better with a different device. So here's my Surface Laptop 7, old network, glossiest screen on planet Earth. You can see I'm getting about 600 up and 600 down, and you can see again my responsiveness scores there. We're going to switch over to the new gaming router, and we're going to run this test again. And as you can see here, I am getting a borderline Ethernet score when it comes to my downloads and uploads. The responsiveness has also dropped fairly significantly. That is a very, very impressive result, if I do say so myself. And just for a point of additional context, this is my tower that I actually like film and edit onto. We are plugged in via Ethernet to this connection, and these are the speeds that we are currently getting. And as you can see here, somehow my download speed was actually faster over the Wi-Fi. Now, of course, my upload speed is significantly better over Ethernet, but that is an insane result. You can see the ping here as well. So there, there's just a good kind of point of reference, Ethernet versus what I just showed you with this router in the same room. So one thing that I really wanted to see was how this thing would handle range. So I've actually stepped all the way out into my backyard. Now my mesh system has a node relatively close, as you can see, giving us a pretty decent score. How will the gaming router, the Archer router, handle this kind of distance? Obviously, when we were close in the same room with both of these routers, it absolutely crushed the mesh system. But I'm really curious to see how it's going to handle this kind of range. And that is exactly kind of what I was expecting. We're very, very far away. So this is not going to be like a full, you know, if you have a relatively large house, you're going to be far away. That's going to be a weakness. You're going to need to use some of those easy mesh routers to kind of work in conjunction with it because it can't perform miracles. But man, if you're up close to it, it is absolutely outstanding. And to be fair to the router, because that was really asking a lot, we are now kind of in my bedroom. We're about as far away from the router as you can get while still being in the house. And it's giving an okay score, but again, that mesh system is going to have a big advantage when it comes to range. I do want to quickly show you some of the different RGB modes. This one in particular I thought was pretty cool. It's called Ripple. And you have this little drip that goes down the side and then like a, like a ripple that appears on the bottom. I thought that was pretty slick. But you've got several other, right? So you've got fire, which, you know, looks kind of how you would expect it to look. This is called Comet. That's a pretty interesting one. How about Wave? Wave might be my favorite. Hard for this thing to focus on this, actually. But yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of different customization you can do with this RGB. And of course, if you, you know, wanted to kind of be a bit more stealthy, you can just turn that off as well. So with those scores being as impressive as they are, the next thing that I want to do is grab my Surface Laptop 7. We're plugged into a capture card. I've grabbed my controller and we're going to do some gaming, but not just any gaming. We're going to do some Xbox cloud gaming, streaming games to this thing to see what kind of latency improvements we have gotten. So hopefully this is visible. We're going to hit our little jump button here and let's see how much of a delay there is between hitting and the action actually taking place. And I think the more important thing is just going to be how does it feel to me? 
And with all cloud streaming games, you're going to have a little bit of latency. But I will say this feels really, really fairly smooth. First person games are the hardest for these streaming games to be able to handle because you have to be able to aim. And if you're looking and you let off the stick and it continues for a large amount of time, that does start to really become a problem. And I'll say with this, I can still detect a little bit of latency, but it's nothing that is super significant at all. We'll do this like this as well. So you can see on the laptop screen itself what kind of a delay we're seeing. That is really, really minor. Very impressive performance in terms of latency while streaming games on Xbox Game Pass. Let's see if we can dig into the app a little bit more. You can see here again, recently boosted Xbox gaming consoles, which it's picking this stuff up and kind of doing it automatically. Game Boost over for now. And then under Game Boost, you can check out supported games and there are going to be quite a few of them. So let's search for Xbox and then you see Xbox gaming consoles. So it's going to be picking that up. Call of Duty is in there, lots of mobile games, but there are a ton of games. And so theoretically, it's going to detect that you are playing one of those games on this network and it's going to try to boost that for you. You'll also see something here called WT Fast and you'll see that it does have a login requirement. You may not know what this is, but basically looking at their website, it says that they eliminate lag with faster ping and smoother gameplay. So if you are a big online gaming person, a competitive gamer, you will know what ping is more than likely. If you have a high ping, that means you're going to be having lag and things might not go correctly for you in these games. I do not have one of these accounts. It looks like it is something that you can try for free, but there is pricing for. So it's a subscription. If you want to integrate this WT Fast thing, it evidently just log in and it's going to run on this router. I can't vouch for how well this works, but it's there. I also really like this game statistics thing. So it's going to show you what it was actually picking up you doing, and then it's going to show you the game time and then how much traffic was there. You also have a full traffic usage setting that's going to be potentially useful to just sort of track what's going on on your computers. You can see some of the stuff with my Surface laptop, Bing doing stuff in the background. This is going to be very useful if you just want to see what's happening on your network. Under more, there's a whole lot of stuff here as well. You have QoS, which you can enable here. You're just going to give it your speed, and then you can prioritize a particular device. As you can see, quality of service. You can prioritize specific devices for a set period, so they're going to basically have more of your bandwidth. Guest networks, you can set up your easy mesh here. Network optimization is a cool one as well. This is actually going to scan automatically for you and determine what channels that this router should be using to get your best performance. I'd recommend doing this periodically to make sure you're getting your best possible speeds. Now, of course, we are talking about a very expensive router. This thing is $599. It is quite feature rich. I like the application a lot. It is a pretty darn well-made app. A lot of things you can do in there, a lot of customization, a lot of settings. You can dive into isolation and VPNs and all that stuff right there in the application. Again, it's very, very well made. The build quality is very good. And when you are relatively near this router, right? Like if you have a large house and you're going to be way far away from this router, you're not going to get these peak speeds. But if you are in a situation where you would rather have this router in the room or in maybe an adjacent room than to run an Ethernet cable to do your gaming, this thing might be worth it for you. Okay, again, if you're a big gamer, you need those really high speeds, you need that low ping, but you, for whatever reason, cannot run an Ethernet cable, I think that this thing might legitimately make quite a bit of sense. So again, I do want to say thanks to TP-Link for sending this router out for me to review. As with all of my reviews, no money has changed hands for the production of this video, and they are seeing it at the exact same time as everyone else. There will be a link to the Amazon listing in the description down below, and that is an affiliate link, which means if you click that link and then you make a purchase on Amazon, I will earn commission for that purchase, which is a great way to help support the channel. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.